fashion is without doubt one of France's most glamorous and lucrative exports. But before the creative work can begin, a parallel industry has already been hard at work producing the fabric, although it's a specialism that's had to deal with a changing global market. French producers no longer have a monopoly on luxury as they once used to. And of course, one of the reasons for that is the cost of French expertise. A savoir-faire that's known for being very expensive. The House of Creation and Know-How works to promote 8,000 or so French textile businesses to international clients. Eight of them are on show today. The company's opened its doors to flaunt the most exciting contemporary examples of a dying art. I'm following the tradition of the Lyon silk trade, traveling the world, selling a specifically Lyonnaise expertise. In the past, whenever the king was in a period of mourning, he wasn't able to buy any new beautiful fabrics. And that's why we started traveling, to find other clients. Silk produced in Lyon often comes from China, its final destination, the global luxury goods market. We've moved from a world of mass retail into the world of ready-to-wear, a phenomenon that's exploded these last 20 years. We're responding to this abundance of desires and fantasies. To stay in the game, research and development are key. That includes working with external fashion houses. He's really supported us from the beginning. He insisted that we use his muslin in our collection and not just settle for imported muslin. And practically speaking, he's always allowed us to use very high quality, innovative fabrics in our collection. Usually when there's something good, we take it. Like, for example, this hand-painted silk, woven with three different threads. The house of Bouton Renault specializes in exclusive velvet. You work with luxury goods groups like LVMH, Kering, houses like Chanel. Dior, Prada, Gucci, Ralph Lauren. They really like these high-quality velvets with their very soft finishes. The explosion of the luxury sector has meant that where they used to order 100 meters, We're now talking about orders of the same fabric to the tune of 1,000, 1,500 meters. As brands can be selling two or three different products across 300 sales points, that's 1,000 meters of fabric. We've moved from very limited series to often very large series for fabrics like this. Tournier specializes in tweed. They have a range of products to ensure maximum commercial appeal. Our specialist fabric department accounts for half of our total revenue. That's where we develop fabrics made using both Kevlar and Aramid fibers, as well as electromagnetic processes. That's one of our fake furs. We put the fabric at the bottom of wind turbines out of the Indian Ocean, and fish lay their eggs in them. So we have that ecological side too. Sometimes traditional production techniques have a hard time adapting to modern demands. It's a product that's known real success. It was exported all over the world in the 70s and 80s. Loads of runway shows featured fabrics made in the Pyrenees. But it looks a little old now. It hasn't really been sufficiently reworked to change with the times. But that doesn't mean that they've done away with their traditional looms, kept safe despite the mass outsourcing of the 1990s. I have two knitters. One is 65 years old, the other 72 years old. They agreed to come back to the workshop four or five years ago to train up someone in their 40s. They've really taken him under their wing. And now I need to make things work. This tapestry was created by the Neolis workshop in just two weeks, as opposed to the usual two months, thanks to a bold jump to digital weaving. Linen is in high demand, in part due to its ecological credentials. The fibers grown in France, spun in Asia and woven back in France. Today we don't have any linen spinning mills in France anymore. For us, the process simply ends here in the north of France. If we were able to have mills close to us, we'd have quite a bit to boast about. That's really the direction we're thinking of moving in. To reopen those factories, we'd need a lot of materials and a lot of people. 
In Alsace, there's much talk of renewable and ethically sourced materials. Nettles and hemp are having a moment. Today, to make a pair of jeans, you need around 11,000 litres of water. To make a pair from hemp requires 110 litres. That's counting from when the crop's planted locally. When it comes to hemp and nettles, the possibilities are endless. It does look like the best hemp plant for textile use is the same one that's used for cannabis. But, well, for the time being... You'd need to wait for European and international law to change. It's starting to happen. Already in the USA they're moving towards legalizing it all. Killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, I'm not sure which would be the greatest source of revenue. <laughs> This luminous fabric's been used commercially since 2004, but better stick with linen, muslin and hemp if you're ever hoping to put them in the wash.